Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessie if you are new around here and I am a K through six music teacher. Today in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys all about choir. So I, well, especially specifically choir the first day of it and kind of how do you lead up to it. So I teach at my school like an extracurricular club. So it's not during school, it's actually before. So it is two days a week and it's about a half an hour each time. So I wanted to talk to you guys all about how I set it up, how I get people into my club, and then finally, what do I do on the very first day? So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stay tuned. <laughs> into I'm hoping that this will help any first year teachers or maybe that you are thrown into a job where all of a sudden you need to do choir that this will help you out because I had no background experience really except for being in choir myself um, so starting this job I started after a teacher that went on to do junior high um, choir so I was very intimidated it was definitely her thing and she had like somewhat like 120 students in this club and so coming in as a teacher that's never really had that experience I was very very intimidated but I feel like I really started to I took a lot from her and she was so nice to talk me through almost everything she did and then I have find a kind of found a way of like how it works for me. So the first thing that I do when I start out my club um, for choir is that I just put out the, I just start talking about it in like music class and just start kind of putting it out there. Then I do have a form that I will put for you guys in the description box below that you can just kind of take note of or make a copy of or change as you need to. Um, I took a lot of it again from that teacher that was here before me. So I send that home, but this year I finally did an online form. So in this information, it has all this information about choir, the attendance policy, the days that we meet, the con you know future concerts, and finally then it has them sign it saying that you know they're going to participate in choir, they're going to follow all of the rules, and then also their parent needs to sign it. And then I had also in there I had a link which learn from my mistake it was my first year doing a google form because what i was so tired about was i did have another form where they had to fill in all the personal information you know contact information what t-shirt size you know and what their email and i would go throughout the whole entire season of choir never being able to get a hold of certain parents because the email either i read it wrong or it was just a little rushed you know i'm sure that they're signing these you know where they're rushing out the door and I could not for like me read certain parts and so I would input them in wrong and so I was very tired of that because I'd have to you know go through my my database and I'd have to find them and I have to call them or I'd have to you know try a different email and so it just was always a tedious process of getting all of that information let alone typing it from paper form <laughs> into the electronic form so because of that I finally was like you know what I'm gonna do a Google form this year and so I put in a link um, and I did shorten the link <laughs> to get to the Google form so that they could put, type in all that personal information and I did not realize that like their uh, one was really an uppercase I and then I think another one was like it looked like a one but it was a lowercase L so it was really hard for people to take that um, that URL and actually get to the correct form. So I next year I'm going to do a QR code that they can just scan. So that'll be much, much better. Um, I did have the form on my school website, but I just don't think enough student or enough students or parents know about it. And so that's a nice thing too, is just be like, okay, just go to my school website and you'll be able to click the link from there. Um, but definitely I think a QR code is going to work next year, but it made it so seamless this year because Google form takes all of that information and then just makes a spreadsheet for you. So automatically I had them in there. And if I like made a mistake on writing out their name, I always will have, you know, you always have as a teacher, like you misspell someone's name I'll be like that's not what you put on the Google form because I just copied and pasted that <laughs> so you have a little you have a little comeback you know <laughs> all good fun um, but also with the, the emails that you don't have to worry about them being wrong I think out of all my emails I had one bounce back this year which I use usually have like a good 10 or 12 so it's pretty awesome um, so once they are signed up then what I did is I actually did a cap on my club this year and I just think that's something that like you need to think about yourself. 
I just, I always felt like, oh my goodness, like this, the teacher before me had 120. I should just like keep building, keep building. And I want everyone to do choir, but I did hit a number um, the year before where it just was not as much fun for me to teach choir because I just, it was one person. Like I need a co-teacher and it, maybe, you know, other teachers can handle it, but I just, I started to, you know, get really, really worked up about choir because there was only one of me and like 80, 90 students and it was just too much. So I finally also this year put a cap on that and it was sad to tell some students no and that's totally up to you and your personal preference, um, but don't be afraid you know do what's right for you and I feel like this year I have six I capped it at 60 students I had first come first serve so whoever got the paper form to me and their Google link filled out that was counted as their they're in so whoever had both of those the first 60 were the people and I do have a waiting list that I will add in some people within the first month and then after that I won't add anybody else in if someone drops so it was, I was really nervous about that, but it actually worked out pretty well. I had, I probably had about five kids that were, didn't quite make it, but they're on the list and you seem to always, you know, miss a, a few people drop out. So you'll, you never know. Um, okay. So then after that, I got my number, then the first day. So let's talk about the first day of choir. So I pretty much do an icebreaker. Uh, in the past I've done, oh, what is her name? I'm going to look it up and then I'm going to like put it in here. Um, but she has a wonderful blog post about elementary choir, which I've taken a lot from her. I've learned a lot from her. Um, but she has a paper that's like a get to know you paper that you go around and you have to find someone that their favorite color is blue or you have to find someone that like really likes dogs and they sign it. And that's been really fun. I've done a chorus like singing themed um, word search before. And then this year I did these would you rather questions. So uh, I think it's actually for band, but on TPT, again, I'll put that in the link below for you guys. It's just like very simple would you rather questions. And I had them come in and they sat down and made small groups. And then I would just ring a bell. I would just ring a bell and I would read a question. They'd have 30 seconds to answer it. And then I'd ring a bell again and ask another question. So it was a really nice way because I talked about it and really emphasized that this is a, my course is fourth, fifth, and sixth. And I don't want any rifts or any clicks to happen because, you know, we, the fourth graders versus the sixth graders and really wanted to talk about like we're all going to be a course family in here and it does not matter which grade you're in or which class like we really want to get to know each other so that was a really nice icebreaker this year then i will do expectations and i took this from too cool for middle school she talked about how she does her expectations and memes and so i'll show you guys on my powerpoint but i have done all my expectations with choir themed memes, which was really fun. So I talk about that. And then I finally just do some simple warm ups. I, you know, do a breath warm up, you know, in through the nose, out with a s for eight beats or something like that. Um, I do some sirens, which is always fun to watch those kids that like never have had choir to be like, whoa, what is this? Um, I talk about posture. We do a silly song. I have a really good book. Again, I will show you guys in just a second when I kind of make this transition. A really good choir warm up book that I take some things from that. And then I love, love, I don't know where it came from, but I learned it at a workshop. The one duck, two geese, three French hens, four big brown bears, five feisty peanuts, six for a fight, six Sicilian sailors, sailing the seven seas. It's like just, you know, getting your tongue and your body warmed up and things like that. So um, I just do a very simple, a few of those. And then the main priority priority for me is getting the seating chart done. That is like the dreaded task with that many students. So what I do, I actually am going to show you guys. Let me reach over here. Wait, real quick. Um, <laughs> get this covered up just, just for privacy sake, but I made little name tags. So the name tags I put out on the floor. And so every kid knew exactly where to sit when they came in. And so there wasn't any like confusion. I very much mixed them up so that they were sitting by a fifth grader, sixth grader, or fourth grader. They weren't all together with their best friends. And then on the back, I have a Velcroed um, QR code or was this Plicker? Um, so I'm using Plickers this year for attendance, which is going to work out oh, amazingly. So before I've had section leaders, which actually went really, really well too, where they were just in charge of a certain row of kids. Um, but this year I'm going to use Plickers so that they can just hold them up. And I just made a Plicker question. If you don't know what Plickers are, it's pretty much these QR codes and you can make questions on this website and then use your phone and you scan 
across and everyone holds up their plicker and you can do like different, let's see, you can do different um, answers based on which side you put up. And so my phone will just go across and scan those and then we're ready to roll. And then I know who has been there and who has not. So that's been a really nice thing too. So once they have at the end, they have their name tag, I say, okay, pick up your name tag and go to the back of the room. And I just slowly, I'm like, I'm not trying to point anybody out, but you know, we cannot, we're not, we don't have risers in here. Like we have to sit from shortest to tallest. It's just the way that you're gonna be able to see best. And so I say like, come on, my short eyes. Like anybody that feels like they're gonna be probably in the first or second row, can you start walking towards me? And I just start like, use it there, use it there, use it, there, use it, use it. And I do like 10 people across and I do six rows total. And so I just start slowly start sitting people and then they put their name tag down. So once I get those six rows, then I just have them leave them there. I'm like, put your name tag down, leave. And so then I dismiss because it is a half an hour. It's very, very short. So after that, then I just collect them in order. So I'm grabbing the first person, putting on top of the second, on top of the third, on top of the fourth, and I go down and then I just paper clip those into their rows and you know put a post-it note on it and then i can make my seating chart based off of that so that has really worked out well for me this year and i feel like i finally like i'm not taking forever because i used to just guess and like try and figure out the shortest to tallest um one year i just did random but it just it takes so much time and it's just so hard to be successful without like seeing them um so yeah I, I hope that helps you guys let me show you kind of my little powerpoint and that warm-up book and then i think that's about it for this video so i've been using this choir file folder box i have been using it also for like my ukulele club let's see if i can zoom in on it so in my sub tub, I've been really loving these file folder um, containers <laughs> for the um, clubs that I have. And so it's been really nice because I can take this home really easily. It's got a nice handle, it's strong, or it can hold it by its sides. And then inside, I have like permission slips. I have, you know, some extra music in the back. I've got my Music Express or Kids Express. No, wait, is this called Music Express? Yeah. So a few songs that I need to work from. And so I can take this home really, really easily. Oh, that's my roster. So I'm not going to show you that. Um, I can take this home really easily and make sure that I have time to work on it. So this is the book I was talking about that I got some silly warm-ups from and silly songs. This is a really great book. I feel like this is my most valued um, choir book that I've ever bought. And I bought quite a few. <laughs> so definitely keep coming back to this one. I highly recommend it. It's Quick Starts for Young Singers by Christy and Angela. So this is my welcome slide that I had for them as they came into music. So I have the agenda and then I also played a clip for them. So as people were coming in, cause I know it's gonna, people are gonna be kind of running late the first day. I had them come in, sit at their name tag. And then I played this PS, what is it? PS 22 chorus. I love all their videos. So I played them the made it from panic at the disco. And so that was really nice. It gave me like three minutes to just kind of see more people come in and any stragglers. And then I, went into the would you rather questions. I just had them, I showed them like a, a box to kind of explain who they were supposed to talk to. So they kind of turned in and make, made a box over a group of four. And like I said, I rang a bell, read a question and then had them answer for like 30 seconds or so. And I did probably about, I don't know, about eight. Then I talked about expectations. So here's the memes that I was talking about. Pay attention with your face. You play with your instrument without good posture. Teamwork makes the dream work. Chew gum, no. I talked about like the show versus the rehearsal. So how much hard work it takes, you know, the importance of following the conductor. And then finally, I just make one more like, you want to join choir and only cost much, just your voice. So like just explaining to them, but sometimes I feel like kids don't still don't really understand what choir is until they're really in it. So just, you know, making that emphasis like we are going to be doing a lot of singing. So, you know, choir is just singing all the time. And so just kind of putting that back in their brains just in case. 
Then I did the one deck with two geese. I did a bunch of other warm ups that I didn't need to put down, but I just put this because I just needed to make sure I remembered it. <laughs> um, I did not get to this. I had to go ahead and stop. Um, but I thought Are You Sleeping would be a great round to try the first day. And then Chocolate Cookie is a song out of the Young Singers book and just out of respect, I won't hold on to it too long, um, but it's a really cute song. And then finally, here's my kind of my choir plan that I have. So this is not obviously not something I would show the kids, but this was the first day and then this will be the second day. I have a little bit out of um, planned out for that. And then third day, and then I'm gonna start doing choir A and choir B. So on their name tags, I will put which choir they are now that I know where they sit. And I'm just splitting the group in half and so for those few harmony part songs that I have, I'm going to really focus that on them those days and only have half the choir come for choir A and choir B. All right, you guys, so hopefully that gave you some good ideas uh, for choir if you're like me and just needed some time to figure it out. Hopefully this helps you in some way, and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.